everyone. This is Dr. Dilara Begum from Bangladesh. I feel very honored and happy to be a part of this webinar. So my topic will be library diplomacy essentials for 21st century. So before starting my topic, I would like to thank you, the conference director, Dr. Sri Kumar, and the conference chair, today's program chair, Dr. K. Rama Patnak. So thank you for inviting me for this, uh, you know, very important over here. Uh, before starting, and you know, uh, we'll talk about a little bit my uh, outline of my you know, presentation. It will be diplomacy and its importance. Specifically, it's a very new thing. And being an information specialist, we have to know that what is diplomacy and how we are allies, profession can be involved with this diplomacy, how we can provide the information from our resource center. And uh, I'll talk about uh, diplomacy and the role of libraries. Of course, there is a big role for the libraries and as well as the LIS professionals. What are the opportunities that are available and what are the challenges actually we're facing uh, to providing library diplomacy? So what is diplomacy? So when you talk about the diplomacy, diplomacy is the management of international relations by means of negotiations and the method by which these relations are adjusted and managed by the ambassadors and invoy the business or out of the diplomats. This is defined by the Harold Nicholson. Historically, you can see the libraries have been playing an important role in existing in, you know, especially the sphere of influence of various countries across the globe. Book donation, translation, publishing programs, and other creation of cultural centers, libraries are all considered as tools for cultural diplomacy. So they are a part of, we're providing the information services and the library is a tools for cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy basically is, is defined as an aspect of diplomacy that involves a government's efforts to transmit its natural and national culture to foreign pub politics, you know, publics with the goal of beginning and um, and it's it's go it's together we are standing for the national idol um, and institution as a part of a large attempt to build support for political and economic goals. There are many definitions, so I put some definitions over there. It's uh, according to Merriam Webster Dictionary. Diplomacy means the art and practice of conducting negotiation between nations. And Dar Darwin defines diplomacy as a communication between strangers, and it facilitates international society. So diplomacy has existed since basically the art of mankind it is most importantly used to complete a specific agenda so therefore our diplomacy much of the world's relations would be abolished and international organization would not exist and the world would not be at a continuous state of where above all so we can say that uh, it's it is the instrument of mutual collaboration dialogue negotiation unity and international harmony it facilitates information, communication, and knowledge exchange or knowledge sharing between and among nations. Diplomacy is a governmental channels for economic, trade, social, cultural, political, and technological knowledge anchored or on a mutual relationship between among nations. So what is cultural literacy or diplomacy? Cultural diplomacy as a type of public diplomacy and the soft power that includes basically the exchange of ideas, information, art, and other aspect of cultural culture among nation and their peoples in order to foster mutual understanding. Petro Gitreus mentioned that cultural actually action are one of the best tools for ministries of foreign affairs worldwide. Establishing and opening culture centers are considered actually one of these cultural action. And of course, libraries is a real tool for public diplomacy that can exceed its responsibility of social assistance, social services, and education. And cultural diplomacy seeks to harness the elements of culture to introduce the foreigners that is have a positive view of the country's people, culture, and the pol policies. Introduce greater cooperation between two nations. Uh, it is aid in changing the policies or political environment of the target nation. Actually, uh, cultural diplomacy actually prevent, manage, and 
mitigate the conflict with the target nation. So as we all know, governments and the people need information at all times. And when they are informed, they know how to act and what to do in times of especially the crisis moment. As for the forms of cultural diplomacy, it is diversified. Normally, it includes arts, art means like any kind of films, dance, music, painting, sculpture, etc. Cultural exhibitions, educational programs, etc. Like a university can do a program, you know, cultural programs or educational programs, exchanges like a scientific research, it can be, you know, artistic performance, educational study, etc. Literature, that is Nobel Prize, the establishment of libraries abroad, and transition of popular and national works, etc. Broadcasting of news and cultural programs, like gift to a nation, religious diplomacy, that is, is actually part of the, the cultural diplomacy. Uh, why are library differentiated from all other institutions? Because libraries are the place where the information seeker can access information without any restrictions. Library is a place people are going over there to try to find other information, to get the, their desired information. Access has been libraries worldwide initiated to preserve and provide continuous access to information and world cultural heritage for the long term access. And the library is a, actually the work has a for, forefront for the citizen and social responsibility. So in that case, only the information can foster peace, unity, progress, social harmony, and maintain a positive relations between you know, all communities, which must be available in the libraries. Because library's work has a change as then. Libraries is a place for social hub. And the social, educational, and cultural benefits accessible by a library are disputable. Libraries for the 21st century are well known for a social engagement, place for collaboration, place for civic engagement, a place for research, creativity, and a place, place to integrate physical and virtual information environments. So, the, so now the role of the library day by day is changing. We are not a resource center only. only. We are not a, in a place people will go over the year, they will read only they will get uh, access the information. But now it's a place for collaboration, it's a place for engagement, especially the social engagement, it's a place for you know, um, civic engagement. So there are diversified role are uh, now library are playing. So LI professionals are working as a change agent to create new ideas, to build relationships, strong relationships, and deliver a sustained community engagement because the least professionals, they are acting as a facilitator. They are acting as an educator, advocate, and they are also consultant. So they are not only the, the people, they, they are providing the information. Basically, they work as a facilitator. So if you think about the libraries, the library in the basically and the culture centers abroad are among the most visited and popular noticeable places. Because from the library, we they are providing the information from the, for the people, those are needed for their desired information. Offer a full range of service for foreign speaking students. Also provide services to the citizens interested in the culture of the country, as well as those with a broad range of interests, ranging from the digital literacy to general knowledge on cooperation programs. So library diplomacy, as far reaching impacts, what are the impacts? If you think about 21st century, the impact and influence of the libraries is far reaching and deep rooted. In the 21st century, all countries try to influence others through knowledge because knowledge is a power. Libraries are a dominant force of cultural diplomacy because they're spreading culture, influencing people across the globe. Now with the books, online materials and other resources have become crucial instrument for helping people know about people and culture of their nations in a positive way. So through the library, we can know, we can help the people to know about the people, to know about the other culture. So I have given some of the examples, uh, the library diplomacy practices, uh, especially uh, in Bangladesh. So uh, I have mentioned Alias Francis. The oldest and the best known society for the diffusions of French language and culture is the Aryan Francis. 
a private association founded in Paris in 1883 with the globe of promoting the propagations of the French language in the colonies and abroad. And as of 2014, Alliance has had 850 centers in 137 countries. This is another example I'm talking about the diplomacy, especially, you know, library diplomacy. The British Council. British Council is an organization specializing in the international cultural and educational opportunities. It's working over 100 countries. They're basically promoting a wider range of knowledge of the United Kingdom and the English language. Basically, they are encouraging cultural, scientific, technological, and educational cooperation with the United Kingdom. This is a picture of uh, British Council Library in Hakka, Bangladesh. British Council Library is a very rich uh, resource center. Their collection, they have a um, collection of books, CDs, online resources, including e-journals and e-books. Um, they provide some uh, film shows, activities, like uh, they have a readers group um, uh, and, uh, and uh, study skills workshop they uh, do organize for English learners and IELTS test takers. They have a professional connect networking. They did networking basically talk for professionals. The Cervantes Institute. This is basically very well known, I you know, institute. They also uh, work with, you know, the library diplomacy and they are playing a very vital role in this sector. And uh, this a worldwide Spanish culture institute basically is founded in 1991. And uh, uh, this is basically created by the Spanish government in uh, 1991. And it is a non-profit organization and it has a robust library network. And through that, the, this network, basically they are working a lot in library diplomacy. The Gothe Institute. The Gothe Institute basically promotes German language and culture across the globe. There are 96 Gothe libraries, which is primarily aimed at giving a comprehensive image of German by providing information uh, basically on the cultures, social, social and political life through its documents and services. And this is a picture of the Goethe Institute in Bangladesh. Arkarke Blood American Central Library. Uh, it's in Dhaka, Bangladesh. You can see in the picture. Arkarke Blood American Central Library is an essential part of the public affairs sections of the US MBC. And this center basically promotes better understanding of American culture, history, values, and institution for the people of uh, Bangladesh. And this is a picture of the Alessia Francis Library in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And, uh, and the resources they have, they have around 7,500 books. They have their subscribing magazine journals from the France because they're promoting the French culture. Multimedia collection for uh, feature film and documentaries and uh, animation films. And they have also CDs, uh, especially on classical, pop, judge, traditional, etc., etc. When you talk about the library diplomacy, the, I have given one of the examples over there. there. This is a pioneer example. Chi mm -hmm. Wang, uh, former head of Asian division at the US Library of Congress, played a pioneer role in cultural diplomacy. And he actually contributing to the normalizing, normalizations and the standing of you know, US-China relationship. And he is the first who have actually built a relationship between China and US. Actually, he have, he take an initiative, uh, actually, a book exchange program between US and the China. And Wang helped arrange a dozen like, Chinese librarians to visit the United States and meet with Didan President, US President Richard Nixon at the White House. And Wang had then helped to organize uh, a return tour for the American librarians to China in December 1979. And uh, uh, due to this enhanced exchange between uh, libraries, between China and the USA, and during his tenure at the Library Congress, Wang has able to build up a library's Chinese collection from 3 lakhs to 1.1 million volumes by the time he retired in 2004. So he's a his contribution, huge contribution. So what are the opportunities for the libraries, especially in diplomacy? The opportunities is basically for the patrons and because for patrons get help on the, you know, uh, the resources uh, which is available in the library. They can know about the uh, culture of other countries 
um, they can access the resources from uh, different different region and the uh, library can provide you know services and they can build a you know a library diplomacy among some other countries and that will help to build up a effective partnerships because through the partnerships you can do a lot you can you know you can be enrich yourself and richard of course it can i have given some examples so we can do some richard programs through the, the library diplomacy when you talk about the library diplomacy and we have, i have given some examples and um, i i have mentioned that uh, what are the benefits but what are the challenges the challenges for library diplomacy because being LIS professionals, we are facing a lot of problems because uh, because everything is changing, especially the information seeking. Be aware of the patrons or the user are changing, and we called we are in the ocean of information. We surrounded surrounded by information, so it's very difficult to to to, to give the you know uh, to the information to the right people efficiently in that case uh, the one thing we have to remember because we become a information specialist become a list alias professionals uh, we have to cope with 21st century skills because this is a big challenge for our, us being an information specialist we have to be cope with 21st century skills so in that case we can be a you know, set examples to providing the right information for the right people at the right time. And when you talk about the 21st century skills, uh, I have given some of the, you know, uh, definitions over there. It's a 21st century skills, uh, according to, to the glossary of uh, education for uh, reform. It's in 2016. Uh, they define that um, the 21st century skills is a concept of encompass a wide ranging of knowledge and the skills that is not easy to de define and that has not been officially categorized. So it's very uh, difficult to define and it's not officially uh, till categorized. And, uh, and another, um, uh, you know, uh, Savidra and Opera, they have posed that there is no single set of 21st century skills and there are 100 had been uh, suggested. So many people, they have suggested many things. So, but uh, being an LIS professional, so we know what to do. What are the core things we have to know? And uh, we have to, you know, uh, develop ourselves. So when you talk about the 21st century skills, so these are basically, uh, we can say, as I mentioned, there is no set uh, skills for 21st century skills for anybody. But these are the uh, practices of 21st century skills. What are the practices? I have given some of the skills over there. I have put the life skills, workforce skill, applied skills, and interpersonal skills. These are the skills is basically um, 21st century skills. And being an information specialist, being a you know librarian, being a um, uh, LIS professional, we have to cope with these skills. So what are the life skills? Life skills, basically, uh, it's, it's like a flex flexibility, agility, adaptability so we have to be flexible to adapt and we have to we have to have to gain this ad adaptability skills because new things are coming up and new technology are coming and and we have to adapt with this you know new things new technologies so that we can be skillful and another one is a uh, workforce skills what are the workforce skills what's workforce skills basically um, means this collaborations leadership we can say leadership initiatives and responsibility so when you do work with uh, in a collaborative way or you know when you take any leadership um, initiative then you can work a lot because we need some leader who actually lead this profession who will lead this uh, maybe your organization maybe um, in your sector so in that case we can work a lot and uh, if it is like uh, if we are flexible if we have the capability to adapt new things new technologies new ideas new knowledge and uh, if you work uh, through the collaboration um, then what are the applied scale applied skills like we have to be accessing and analyzing the information and we have to do the effective communications and determining the alternative solution to the problems. Maybe we have many problems, but we have to find out what are the alternative solutions. And uh, you know, accessing and analyzing information is a is a is a big thing. We have to be, be we have to be very careful. And in that case, basically everything is depend on I I think is interpersonal skills. Interpersonal skills basically it's defined cooperation and the teamwork. 
you cannot say that I can do all the things. You need some cooperation. You need some co teamwork. And this teamwork and the cooperation will help a lot to do, do work you know, efficiently. So lastly, I would like to uh, conclude my presentations to say a uh, few words over here. This is libraries are, are, are a very crucial tool for cultural diplomacy. So it's a library, I can say, I can say, say it's a tool to providing the cultural diplomacy because libraries offer an opportunity to have a solid understanding of diversified cultures. Libraries organize information focus programs and encourage knowledge and idea sharing. Libraries help to promote multicultural values. It helps young people become global citizens through knowledge gathering, skill development, and language proficiency. So these are the things actually library are doing. So we can say that library are a very crucial tools for cultural diplomacy. And we are the people we can promote this culture, cultural diplomacy through our libraries. So this is end of my presentation. Uh, I believe that everything that is done in the world is done by hope. So this is the quote from Martin Luther. So this is my end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions regarding my presentation, I'll be happy to answer your queries. Again, I would like to thank the webinar organizer, especially the conference director, uh, Dr. Sri Kumar and the, and the session chair, um, Dr. K. Roma Patan Patanaik. Uh, and I'm very grateful uh, to, to you people to invite me in this session. So if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer you any queries. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.